Hello viewers, this is Patriot Prime, and I am here with a PSA. It's come to my attention that some of you, my loyal viewers, don't understand what I mean when I say the word collar. So, being from West Virginia, I'm going to help you out with some of my southern slang, my southern drawl, if you will, and help you understand what I mean when I say the word collar. If I'm talking about this portion of a shirt, this is my shirt's collar. If I happen to grab this G1 figure and I point at this blue section right here, I'm referring to the blue collar. Now, if somebody would ring me on my telephone and I answer it, I'm talking to a collar. So, I hope that helps you out with some of the issues with my pronunciation of the word collar. And let's get on to the review. So, Patriot Prime. Maximize. Hey, what's going on guys? Pager Prime here once again with another Generation 1 Transformers review. And welcome back to Getting Triggered with Patriot Prime. My look at the Generation 1 Trigger Bots and Trigger Cons. And the bot we're looking at for this video is 1988's G1 Crankcase. Crankcase coming out in 1988 did not appear in the television animated series nor did he appear in a television commercial. But he did appear in Marvel Comics beginning in issue number 48, where he was actually on the cover with Megatron and the other Trigger Cons. Now, Crank Case didn't really do much in the story. I mean, he was behind Megatron. He's helping Megatron out and assisted Megatron in murdering Boltax and his disciples. Crank Case once again appeared in issue number 63, where this time he was part of Thunderwing's Mayhem Attack Squad as part of the Matrix Quest. But once again, he really didn't do anything. And that's pretty much the history of the character. He really didn't do much in the comics, background only. So now, let's get triggered and check out 1988's Crankcase. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Crankcase's alt mode is that of an SUV, and this is a very well detailed SUV for a toy this size. I mean, flipping around on the front, you can see the lights, the winch, the hook. I mean, check it out. There's the hook right there for the winch. Lights here up top. Details there on the hood. Molded details on the roof. You got the side mirrors right there. Door details. Uh, not sure. It looks like gas cans, water cans on the side. Flipping around, you've got the spare tire. I mean, that is pretty nice molded details for a really small figure. He's got decent stickers as well. Now, these are the original stickers. They look really good, well, aside from that one. But I didn't feel the need to replace these with Toy Hack stickers since they weren't bad. And as I said in the last video, some G1 toys, I like to keep the old stickers on just for that nostalgia or... <laughs> I guess, antique look now. Now, being a trigger con, he does have his trigger gimmick. You have a little button right here up top. Press that, and weapons deploy. Now, unlike Override, his weapons are not chrome. They are just blue plastic. Let me show you again. Fold those back. Press the button, and weapons roll out. Now, with the trigger bots and trigger cons, there are two different styles of rapid deploying guns. Override, for example, you press the button and the weapons flip out real fast since they're on a spring mechanism. With crankcase, you press the button, they flip out, but there's a gear mechanism instead, making these weapons just a little slower on the draw. So you are going to see a difference in weapon deployment as I go over the reviews of these figures. Now, to transform crankcase into robot mode, what we're going to do is take the guns, put those back in place, then extend the front of the vehicle, forming the legs, flip these sections up here, forming the arms. You're going to grab the head, pull it up, lock it into place, and then this back section, 
completely flip it around, and there we have Crankcase in robot mode. Now, he is not a bad-looking robot at all. Face sculpt, it's okay, but way too much yellow. He needed some eye collar or something, and you will notice he has kind of a humanoid face opposed to the comics where they draw him with a face plate. The only articulation he has, his arms can go up and down. That's it. They cannot do a 360 for his giant backpack. Backpack, of course, that's his weapon system. Now, he is a little tricky. What you have to do with him, instead of just pressing the button and letting it go, the guns won't go all the way across or all the way forward. You have to hold the button down so they'll swing around. Now, I do like how the guns look on him. They are shoulder cannons, but I wish they were chrome because it really blends into the rest of the figure. Down here on the legs, that's all one solid piece. So that's it. He's got a massive backpack, but since that's holding ammo, I can give him a pass. Now the Decepticon sticker we have up here, that is a toy hack sticker that I added separately because robot mode, he doesn't have many stickers at all. He could use a little bit more oomph to this guy, so I gave him a big con symbol up there on top. Other than that, decent molded details, except for that screw dead sitter in the middle. So there you go, guys. There is Crankcase in robot mode. And now for a quick size comparison, here is 1988's Crankcase with Generation 1 Optimus Prime, 1988 Trigger Bot Override, and Transformers Dark of the Moon Deluxe Crankcase. Big difference there. 1988's Crankcase is a pretty good Transformer. He's got a fantastic alt mode. I really like the SUV with all those molded details. Robot mode, robot mode's okay. It's decent. It could use a few more sticker applications, and I really wish that they gave him chrome weapons instead of the blue that blends in with the rest of the figure, but what are you going to do? So guys, there you have it. 1988's TriggerCon Crankcase. So, does a Generation 1 crankcase belong in your collection? Absolutely. This is a great little transformer. Great alt mode. Okay robot mode, but he's really cool. And what's awesome about these guys is they're really cheap on the secondary market. So you can usually pick one up for anywhere between 15 and 20 bucks. So go for it. Just keep in mind, make sure his little spring-loaded gimmick does work. And guys, I want to thank you for stopping by and checking out my video. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe. I try to put out one to two videos a week. Just depends on my schedule. Check out my series, The Sit Rep, where I sit down and interview other Transformer Collector YouTubers. And we just have a real good time talking about those plastic robots. If you feel free, I have a PayPal link in the description of this video if you would like to donate to the channel. And don't forget... Check out the Patriot Prime merch store. I have t-shirts, tank tops, mugs, and stickers. And they come in a variety of collars. But since they're t-shirts, they don't have collars. Guys, I appreciate you watching. This is Patriot Prime. Hoo-ah!